The film opens with the voice of an android named Jimmy narrating over the history of the Mother World. The pursuit of power led to the royal family's conquest until an assassin murdered the king and queen. A tyrant named Balisarius, who leads the forces of Mother World, sends his brutal second-in-command Admiral Atticus Noble into the far reaches of the Mother World to seek out those who plan to begin a rebellion. On the planet Velt, a woman named Cora tends to her crops before meeting her friend Gunnar to go to a harvest celebration in their village. The village's chief, Sindri, addresses his people while a hunter named Den has eyes for Cora, though she has no interest in a romantic relationship. While out with her friend Sam, Cora sees Mother World ships descending upon Velt. The community discusses how to approach the visitors before three smaller ships led by Noble arrive in the village. Noble speaks to Sindri over potential rebels in the land, as well as questioning him over the supply of crops they yield. Gunnar had sold surplus crops to enemies of the Mother World. After a tense exchange, Noble beats Sindri to death in front of his people, along with another woman. He then demands to Gunnar that the village hand over their grain supply within ten weeks. Elsewhere in the village, a young soldier named Eris appears to take a liking to Sam, but must watch as his superiors taunt her. He also briefly speaks to Jimmy, who talks to Sam about Princess Issa, daughter of the slain king and queen, who perished along with her parents on that day. Jimmy laments how Issa was supposed to usher in a new era of kindness, only for it to be taken away so cruelly. The villagers debate on how to handle Noble and his men, with some offering to appeal to their humanity. Cora later sees as some of the soldiers harass Sam and attempt to rape her, even as Eris tries to stop them. Cora enters the barn with an axe and proceeds to slaughter the soldiers until the captain holds Sam at gunpoint. Jimmy enters, and the captain orders him to kill Cora, but Jimmy instead shoots him. This is enough to convince Cora they need to fight back, since Noble will kill off the villagers when he returns. Cora leaves Velt with Gunnar to seek out a group of insurgents called the Blood Axes who may aid them against the forces of Balisarius. Cora tells Gunnar about how she witnessed the slaughter of her community at the hands of the tyrant when she was a child, and she was faced with an opportunity to kill him when confronted with him, but her weapon was out of ammunition. Instead of killing her, Balisarius had Cora trained at the Imperium along with other soldiers under the name Arthalys, turning her into a killer before she deserted them. Despite being groomed into being a mercenary with no emotional connections, Cora had a lover who was killed in battle. Cora and Gunnar arrive in the port city of Providence to seek out the man who may lead them to the Blood Axes. When the two mention General Titus, a nearby man named Kai begins to pay attention. Cora and Gunnar are accosted by a thug who attempts to sexually assault Gunnar before Cora knocks him down. A nearby alien tells Cora and Gunnar about Titus's whereabouts before the thug returns with backup. Cora and Gunnar fight and kill them until the main thug has Cora at G Fun Point. Kai raises his firearm and blasts the thug in the head before introducing himself as a smuggler and joining Cora and Gunnar. Kai suggests to Cora that he knows a man who can aid them on their mission. He guides them to a ranch on another planet to find a man called Tarak, who is being kept prisoner by the rancher, Hickman, due to a debt Tarak owes him. He is told about Cora's mission and the three bargain with Hickman that if Tarak can tame a nearby chained-up creature called a Bingu, then Tarak can go free, otherwise, all of them will be indebted to Hickman. Tarak approaches the Bingu and communicates with it. After freeing it, Tarak rides the wild beast. He is granted freedom to join Korra, but as he leaves, he witnesses Hickman poorly handling the Bingu, which ends with the creature killing Hickman by sticking its talon through his chest. Kai then leads Korra to a cobalt mining planet, where they meet a swordsman called Nemesis. Kai informs her of the job just before she meets a humanoid spider creature called Harada, who is keeping a small girl captive before preparing to kill her. Nemesis tries to negotiate with Harada, but ultimately ends up battling the monster and impales her fatally before saving the girl. Nemesis joins the rest of the crew. 
The experience makes Korra reminisce over how she spent time as the royal guard for Issa when she served the Imperium. She witnessed Issa bring a bird back to life, and the king had believed Korra being her friend made her feel safe, but Korra clearly feels guilt over what happened to Issa and her parents. The crew goes to a moon that holds a gladiator arena where Titus is. Once an Imperium general, he now lives disgraced on the streets and works as a prize fighter after his previous failure in battle. While Titus remains ashamed of his past, Korra convinces him to fight back so he can get his revenge. The crew then goes to the planet Sharon, where they meet King Levitica so that they can meet the Blood Axe siblings, Darian and Devra, in the hopes that Gunnar's previous connections with them may give them a chance at convincing them to join their rebellion. The two have no desire to help until Korra gives them a speech. Darian then gives his own speech to his clan, with half of them joining him and the other half going with Devra. Noble and his crew, the King's Gaze, have been tracking the Blood Axes and later turn up on the scene after the insurgents retreat, and he kills Levitica before laying siege to the area. Kai guides the crew to a trading post under the guise that he is dropping off goods before setting off for a better life, but he was actually in cahoots with Noble this whole time and was trying to collect the bounties on the heads of Korra and the others. Noble has them captured and reveals he knows more about the crew than they let on. Tarak is actually a prince, while Nemesis killed several Imperium soldiers to avenge her murdered children. When Gunnar is ordered to execute Korra, he instead grabs the weapon and uses it to kill Kai. A battle breaks out between the freed rebels and the king's gaze. Darian gives his life to bring down a ship and save as many of his people as he can. Most of the villains are killed before Korra and Noble have their showdown atop the post's highest platform. After an intense fight, Korra overpowers Noble and knocks him off the ledge. The, the crew returns to Velt and enjoys their temporary victory, but they are aware that the Imperium will soon retaliate. Korra brings her new friends back to her village, more hopeful for their future than before. An Imperium ship recovers Noble's body and starts to revive him. His mind is taken to a realm where he communicates with Balisarius. Despite thinking he will be happy to know about Noble finding Korra, Balisarius is instead angered and demands that Noble bring Korra to him so that he may kill her personally. This is the end of part one. By the way, if you found this content valuable and would like to stay updated with our future releases, we invite you to subscribe to our channel.